You know, there are two kinds of animals in this world, predators and prey. No one watches a leopard chase down a gazelle and denies that the gazelle has a right to use its hooves and horns to protect itself from the predator. But there are people in this room tonight and all across the country who would deny that same right to self-defense to other human beings. Such people seem to think that the way to stop the leopard is to cut the horns off of the gazelle, that by somehow making it easier for the predator, the predator will simply go away. My friends, this is insane. When you make it easier for the predator, you get more predators. So let's start with the so-called assault weapons, more properly known as semi-automatic rifles. In 2011, the total firearm murders came to 8,583, according to the FBI. Now, during that time, the total murders committed by rifles, all rifles, not just semi-automatic rifles, were 323. That's 3% of all murders. Hammers and clubs kill half again as many people as rifles. Hands and feet murder twice as many. And knives kill five times more Americans than all rifles combined. Preventable medical errors kill about 98,000 people per year. Medical malpractice kills more than 12 times as many people as are murdered in the U.S. each year. That's more than 300 times the number killed by all rifles, not just the so-called assault rifles. And yet, no one talks about limits on hammers or knives or doctors or hospitals. No one does that because the good we perceive from hammers and knives and doctors far outweigh their perceived harm. And yet, studies show that firearms prevent anywhere from 800,000 to over 2 million violent crimes every year. The lowest estimate means that 100 times more violent crimes were prevented with firearms than the total murders committed with firearms. That's 100 times as many. Now, in October of 2007, Amanda Collins was walking to her car after a night class at the University of Nevada at Reno. Amanda had a concealed carry permit for her 9mm Glock that she carried for self-defense. Unfortunately for Amanda, UNR is, like most college campuses, a gun-free zone. So, like the law-abiding citizen that she is, she did not have her gun with her in this gun-free zone when she was attacked by James Bila. Bila raped her on the UNR campus less than 300 yards from the campus police office. He then walked away, and a few months later, this human predator went on to murder 19-year-old Brianna Dennison. Amanda Collins went on to say, quote, I know, having been the first victim, that Brianna Dennison would still be alive had I been able to defend myself that night, unquote. Therefore, I am directing the virtual attorney general to aggressively challenge any gun control laws that violate Amanda Collins' right not to be raped and Brianna Dennison's right not to be murdered. You're not forced to abandon your First Amendment right when you enter Chicago or New York, or your Fifth Amendment rights when you walk onto a college campus. As virtual president, I will veto on the spot without hesitation, but with a great deal of pleasure, any and all attempts to destroy any of the Bill of Rights, of the Constitution, of the United States of America. Because when it's all said and done, the Second Amendment to the Constitution is not there to protect us against criminals, and the people calling for gun control know this. That's why they want gun control instead of crime control. That's why they want laws that, at the stroke of a pen, turn law-abiding citizens into criminals. The Second Amendment is there to protect the American people from tyranny. The Second Amendment is there to protect the American people from politicians. The Second Amendment is there to protect the American people from us. Now, some politicians claim America deserves a vote on this issue. Okay, let's have a vote. Those of you advocating infringement on the right of the people to keep and bear arms need to go to the American people with the 28th Amendment, which would simply read, the Second Amendment to the Constitution is hereby repealed. That would, for the first time, give you the legal authority to do what you have been doing and what you are trying to do now in direct violation of your oath of office to defend the entire Constitution of the United States, not just the parts you happen to approve of. So go ahead, go to the American people and tell them that ultimate power is no longer to be vested in the people who can't be trusted with that power according to you. Tell them only the government can have that power now. You go out there and try to convince the people of the 38 states that you're going to need to get that amendment passed to agree with your opinion of them versus their opinion of you.
I dare you. 12 million unarmed men, women, and children were unable to resist being murdered by their own national socialist government in Germany. Perhaps 50 million unarmed men, women, and children were murdered by their own Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. 50 million Chinese murdered by their own government under Mao, who also disarmed his people. And in Cuba, and in Vietnam, and in the killing fields of Cambodia. Now you say that can't happen here? You say we're protected? By what? By the Constitution that you're in the process of destroying? You are in violation of your oaths of office by so much as introducing this legislation, let alone passing it. My fellow Americans, the previous inhabitants of this chamber watched as 100 million people were murdered after being disarmed by their own governments. Every single one of those men, women, and children were as real and precious and irreplaceable as the children at Newtown. And I tell you here and now that I will be damned if I will let that happen to the American people.